Let's let's say that ETs show up and they mm-hmm. knock on our door and everyone's everyone's on CNN and it's on Fox it's everywhere and all of a sudden um we have proof of yeah. there's something else out there right. I got to believe that's going to throw a couple of ripples into religion <laughs> sure there'll be ripples <laughs> so, in every aspect of society of course there will be yeah. of course there will be but again, a lot of truths but a lot of truths that we've been taught and programmed to believe are going to be thrown out the window. And that's a fairly jarring scenario for people that are willing to throw them out. Yes. For people that are not. Now we go back again to the parallel versions of earth. I refuse to believe this. I refuse. It's not true. I'm going to stay in the direction of an earth where it's not true. They will experience that. They will not have that exposure. They will not see those things. It will not happen in their version of Earth. If they are really in that much denial that it would really destroy their worldview, they'll create a worldview where they live in it, and it has nothing to do with the worldview of other people who accept it. And it is literally a different world. Literally a different world. So it's very similar to the souls who believe in um, the flat Earth concept. Uh, that believe it wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe that the Earth is flat. Um, mm-hmm. even though science completely just basic math. <laughs> yeah, actually, Bashar has explained the reason for that psychically, psychologically. Okay. When consciousness expands to the point where you start to realize that physical reality is a projection of consciousness, mm-hmm. you are sensing that physical reality isn't real. You're sensing that physical reality is flat. And they're interpreting the idea that physical reality is flat as a projection into the idea of how physical reality actually is represented in 3D space. That's the misunderstanding. They think that they're sensing that physical reality is flat is actually the way physical reality in 3D space presents itself, and it's not. So they're interpreting the non-reality, the non-realness of physical reality in a literal context instead of a metaphorical context or an energetic context or a consciousness context. They're just translating it into, well, if physical reality is flat, that must mean the physical Earth is flat. No, in 3D space, it's not. It's a ball, but it is flat as a projection because it's on the inside of our consciousness it's on the screen on the inside of our soul so to speak you know there is a there's a concept that's been tossed around a bunch by people and people ask me this question i'd love to hear you and bashar as i uh take on it is that that there is a spiritual battle happening right now for humanity's quote-unquote soul and consciousness as it's going forward the dark and the light and that kind of stuff uh, what don't you take I on that yeah, I don't want to see it that way. I don't think Bashar sees it that way. I, he understands, again, like we've been talking about, that there are people who are giving over to fear as opposed to love. And therefore, you can say it's more of an internal battle rather than an external one. Everyone is playing a part. Everyone is on a path. Everyone is a path. And, you know, as a lot of ancient wisdom states Sometimes you need the darkness to see the light more clearly. So I wouldn't call it a battle. I would call it a a play, a scenario that by having negativity and having what appears to be darkness based in fear, it gives others an opportunity to see the light more clearly and head in that direction. I don't want to frame it or define it as a battle because that in and of itself implies Mm -hmm. negative energy. So I'd see it simply more as the opportunities that soul has for growth using fear in a positive way to move forward. And Daryl, what advice do you and Bashar have for for people that are struggling with all these changes that are happening in the world today? I want to remind everyone, whether you know it or not, that we chose to be here because this is an exciting time of transformation and change. You are capable of experiencing great change in your life in a positive way. Being familiar with Bashar's formula does help, but there are many ways in which to do it. 
uh, but not to in any way, shape or form, give up hope to see what's going on again as a choice to see more clearly what you do and don't prefer and to move in the direction of what you really do truly prefer. Uh, and to understand that our greatest power is the freedom to choose. We have free will, choose what you really prefer, and your life will follow suit. Life is our projection. How we define it is how we experience it. The universe doesn't contradict us. Creation and existence doesn't have a mind of its own in that context. It is unconditionally supportive. If you say, I'm going to define this thing negatively, creation says, okay, I support you unconditionally in your negative experience. But at the same time, if you say I'm going to define it in a positive way that can help me and be of service to me and be of service to humanity, creation says, okay, I will unconditionally support you in that knowledge and in that belief and in that experience. It doesn't care. You're in charge. Now, um, I haven't asked you these questions in a long time. They're the questions I ask all my guests. And I think I think I only asked you the first one. And that was a couple of years ago at this point. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how you answer them this time. Okay. What is your definition of living a fulfilled life? Living your truth. <clears throat> For me, it's following the formula that Bashar gives, but it's being true to yourself and really understanding how things work and knowing that you, you are deserving. You're a part of creation, you know, um, that you're not judging except you're judging yourself. You're not being judged. So it's like, live who you are, be your true self, validate yourself, be of service to humanity. That to me is living a fulfilled life. If you had a chance to go back in time and speak to little Daryl, what advice would you give him? Don't worry, you're not crazy. (laughs) There's going to be some strange stuff happening to you in your life, but don't worry. It's all going to work out. (laughs) Now you're going to be talking to Alex on her, on a podcast. What's a podcast? Yeah, <laughs> Listen, podcast. podcast is the least your problem. You're going to be channeling, and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> What's channeling? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just watch Star Wars. You'll enjoy it. Uh, uh, exactly. That's what you should tell them. Um, how do you define God or source energy? All that is. I think it, it literally is everything that is. I think everything is made of it. There's no outside to it. It is everything that is, and we are part of it. What is love? Love is, and especially unconditional love, is the frequency of existence itself. That's our translation, our bodily translation of the frequency of existence itself is what we call unconditional love. And what is the ultimate purpose of life? To be all the ways that all that is has of experiencing itself as you. And to understand that we are all different aspects of the same thing, to grow, to discover, to play, to enrich, to serve, to enlarge. You know, somebody once asked me, what what are you? Not who are you, but what are you? And ultimately, the answer that Bashar gave is the one I give now. I am you from another point of view. You are me from another point of view. That's what we are. We are all that is from all these different points of view. That's what we are. So be what you are. Be yourself. Be your true self. The hardest thing in the world is to try and be someone you're not. (laughs) Be yourself. And where can people find out more about you and the amazing work that you and Bashar are doing in the world? They can go to Bashar.org, B-A-S-H-A-R.org. If they want to know what I'm doing specifically with my passion in life, they can go to DarylAnka.com, D-A-R-R-Y-L-A-N-K-A.com, or they can see what I'm doing with my danger rooms, my escape room, (laughs) by going to BoggledEscaperooms.com, B-O-G-G-L-E-D, BoggledEscaperooms.com. And for anybody who hasn't gone to BoggledEscaperooms.com, if you're in the L.A. area... That is where they are. There's going to be, well, there's one right now, second one coming soon. And God knows how many more you insane, you and your insane wife are putting together. (laughs) I'm assuming you're the insane one. She's just like, ugh. (laughs) That's close enough to the truth. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Daryl, do you have any party messages for the audience? Just what I've already said, you know, This is a journey. We all chose to be here. 
you know, maybe it helps sometimes to think of it like going to a theme park and you're saying, I'm going to go on this roller coaster and it's going to be scary for a while. But ultimately, I know that it's going to be an interesting ride and I'm going to grow through this process. So face challenges by defining them as fun. They don't have to be a struggle. They don't have you don't have to suffer through it. Watch your definitions. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Watch what goes through your head. Define things in a way. I'm not saying that you start calling negative things positive things, but stay in a positive state because then you can get a benefit from it, even if it began in a negative way. So just stay in that positive state. Everything will fall into place. It does work. It really does work. To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.